Questin here with a discussion about Lords of the Fallen and one of the best weapons you can acquire in the game early on. Certainly a weapon that can do a significant amount of damage but also can be fairly fast and that is of course Pieta's weapon. Pieta is the first real boss of this game. She basically marks the end of the tutorial section of the game and with her remembrance which you can gain by defeating her then going umbral if you aren't already in umbral by the time you defeat her and then gaining the memory. You use the lamp, you uh, pull the soul from the memory, or you pull the memory, and you get her remembrance. And with that remembrance, you can get access to this sword. You also need to go get an item that's gonna be along your main path as you're progressing through the game. So you get an item, then you go back to the main hub area in Skyrest, you talk to the merchant who's only available in the Umbral Realm, and you will gain access to remembrances. That's how you can get access to the weapon. Now, actually buying the weapon and using it, that's a completely different discussion. The weapon itself has a 25 radiance requirement. That is a significant amount of radiance, but it is a fairly light weapon. It's a short sword weapon, though, funnily enough, it's longer, it's got the same kind of reach as a longsword, which is a bit amusing to think about, but it's a fairly light weapon that does a significant amount of holy damage and a good amount of physical damage. So over here with it at level 3, it's doing 170 attack power. It has also 169 holy damage. So you're looking at 340 power in this weapon between regular attack power and holy damage power so it's got a good amount of damage to it and it has a secondary effect now you're going to need that radiance but you're also going to need more than uh just that radiance to uh to get access to this uh particular weapon you're also going to need 40 umbral scourings it is a powerful weapon so it, that requires 25 radiance so it is going to be expensive now you can buy umbral scourings that are a bit expensive but you can certainly buy them or you can gain them from memories that you have access as various points in the game and many points in the game in the umbral realm if you're in the mortal realm you'll be able to tell where when there's something in the umbra umbral realm by the butterflies that are going to surround that particular location of interest so gain 40 umbral sky rings you get 25 radiance and you can use pietra's sword now it is a very cool looking weapon though it might seem longer than it actually is because if i switch to the one-handed grip you can see the point over here and it's that point that's the point of contact with enemies so while it might seem significantly longer than it actually is it isn't quite like that though that said i'm reminded very strongly with this weapon of the bastard sword from uh, from Dark Souls 1. Like, moveset, like, let's consider moveset. So, this is light attacks with two-handed swing. Like, yeah, if that's not a bastard sword, I don't know what is. And then with heavy attacks, we can do these kind of sweeping attacks like Pia does. Though, yours are not gonna quite reach the same, um, uh, on the same level that her swings do in the boss fight. Then you've got regular attacks, a bunch of swings over here. Um, and then you've got jabs over here and swings with heavy attacks with a one-handed grip. Now, how should you use this weapon? You can certainly use it as a two-handed weapon, but really I would probably recommend it using it uh, as more of a, um, a one-handed weapon. And the reason is that this weapon has an extra effect that happens quite frequently. This weapon smites enemies. Like, is this the Ash... Is this uh, Pietra Sword, the lightsaber, or is this the Ashbringer? I'm not sure. You make of that what you will. So you can use it as a two-hand weapon. It is certainly light enough to use... Um, to use as whichever way you want. You can dual wield, you can use a shield with a one hand grip, uh, you can go uh, for longer reach with a two hand grip. That would probably be a recommendation. If you need to reach an enemy from a longer distance, go with two hand grip. If you're. 
And if you need to stagger the enemy more, yeah, also go with uh, uh, two hand grip. But otherwise, uh, otherwise going with the one hand grip is really the way to go because you attack faster. And because you attack faster, you can get more of those might props. that do a significant amount of damage on enemies. So you'll just obliterate everything that stands in your path. It's an excellent weapon that is well worth the investment. I'm not sure why they decide to make tooltips the way they are. I mean, it just forces you to use a wiki to figure out, hey, is this weapon worth it or is it utter rubbish? This weapon is very, very much worth using. Does a ton of damage, does holy damage, well, radiance damage, r radiant damage. And the interesting thing about this weapon to also consider. So, uh, another thing to consider is you can also buff it up to gain even more, more radiant uh, damage, for instance. So, because you will obviously have a lot of radiance, so over here I just decide to buff the weapon to increase its damage potential. So really potent stuff over here uh, with this particular sword. Just annihilates everything in your path. <laughs> That's the way to view this particular weapon. And that is all there is to say. Costine here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable uh, notifications. And I'll see you next time.